Today, my message is about being resilient, an especially important message during these unprecedented times. Everyone in the listening audience has been resilient at some point in their lives. I believe there are few things more certain in all aspects of life than setbacks. Finding the resilience to not just cope, but also take this in stride and ultimately learn from them is a critical skill in today's unpredictable and changing world. For my message this year, I've decided to refer to a few books. However, I will primarily focus on You Are Awesome, How to Navigate Change, Wrestle with Failure, and Live an Intentional Life by Neil Pasricha. Pasricha teaches us throughout his book about gratitude, happiness, and most importantly, resilience. I believe that if we are resilient and establish goals, these goals will provide us with direction and purpose. Resilience and success are areas you have already proven. Past Reaches said, moving through failure is the real success. Building resilience is the real success. The failures and losses are part of the process for anyone who is willing to try. One of the several reviews of the book stated, with all the world throws at us, resilience is now a precious commodity and it's the underpinning of this terrifically helpful book. You Are Awesome is more than a boost to your self-esteem, it's a perspective for failure and success. He presents ideas such as how to use a single word to keep your options open after failure, ways to accelerate your ability to learn and adapt, a two-minute morning practice that helps you eliminate worry. Mrs. Allaby gave me an inspirational quote once by Mandy Hale, which is relevant to today's topic. Hale said, 10 years from now, Make sure you can say that you chose your life, you didn't just settle for it. You need to constantly work on developing the ability to move forward. You need to be resilient. Success does not come without failure and being resilient. Malcolm Gladwell wrote a book called Outliers, The Story of Success. In a quick summary, he indicated that success follows a predictable course. It is not the brightest who succeed, nor is it simply the sum of decisions and efforts we make on our own behalf. It is rather about those who have been given opportunities and who have the strength and presence of mind to seize them. In essence, it is about being resilient and working hard. You should set goals which are attainable and those which present personal challenges. Why should you challenge yourself? Without setting personal challenges, we settle for a good life and we are entitled to a great life. Never settle for just being good. Strive to achieve greatness in your lives. Greatness can be achieved and measured in many ways. Establish values which reflect your guiding principles, adhere to them, mold them as you grow, but above all, be honest with yourself and others, and you will be successful in all of your endeavors. This year has presented many challenges to each of you. It has presented many scenarios you never thought you would have to deal with in your final year of public education. However, each of you, the FHS graduating class of 2020, has discovered ways to be successful. You have been resilient with your education, resilient within your community, and resilient within your family. Continue this and you will be very successful in life. I have one final message for you from Dr. Seuss. Life is too short to wake up in the morning with regrets. So love the people who treat you right, forgive the ones who don't, and believe that everything happens for a reason. If you get the chance, take it. If it changes your life, let it. Nobody said it would be easy, they just promised it would be worth it. I wish you all the best. Be happy, be successful, be resilient, and enjoy every moment of your life. Leanne Fitch was appointed to the position of Vice Chair of the RCMP Management Advisory Board for the federal government in June 2019, after retiring more than 33 plus years in municipal policing. Leanne served seven years as Chief of Police for the Fredericton Police Force and seven years as Deputy Chief after spending 20 years in a broad range of frontline operational policing roles including patrols, street crime, and detective in family, services section of criminal investigations. She served as training officer, media liaison, platoon supervisor, and special munitions leader of crowd management team. Leanne is a graduate of Fredericton High School, class of 81, the Ontario Police College, and holds both a bachelor's and master's degree from the University of New Brunswick. She's a lifelong learner who has completed many specialized police-related courses over the years at Atlantic Police Academy, Canadian Police College, and Dalhousie University. While working with the force, she has taught part-time as an instructor in the Department of Criminology with St. Thomas University from 1998 to 2004. 
Leanne is a published author on topics including community policing, organizational change, intimate partner violence, and other police-related topics and has presented locally, nationally, and internationally. Leanne was named Officer of the Year for both the Atlantic Women in Law Enforcement and the International Association of Women Police in 2002 and 2003 respectively. She has earned her Police Officer's Exemplary Service Medal from the Government of Canada, the Queen's Diamond Jubilee Medal, and the Member of the Order Merit for the Police Forces from the Governor General of Canada. Leanne is a member of the Canadian Association of Chiefs of Police and International Association of Chiefs of Police, Public Relations Lead for the International Association of Women Police and member and former executive board member of AWLE and the Atlantic Regional Coordinator for IAWP. Leanne was inducted into the New Brunswick Crime Prevention Hall of Fame and was recognized as an NB Pride Hero. Leanne is committed to improving professionalism, compassion, ethics and community collaboration, and crime prevention in the field of policing. She is the past Atlantic representative on the Permanent Working Group for Criminal Intelligence Services Canada and recent past chair and vice chair of the Provincial Executive Committee for Criminal Intelligence Intelligence Service New Brunswick. She is the past co-chair of CACP Crime Prevention, Community Safety and Wellbeing Committee, where she was instrumental in the development of CACP National Framework for the Intimate Partner Violence. Leanne is a former roundtable member for the Provincial Department of Public Safety on Crime Reduction and Domestic Intimate Partner Violence and former member of the NB Domestic Violence Death Review Committee. She is the past chair and current committee member for Safe for Pets 2 in transition with you. Founder and previous chair of FPF Culture Diversity Advisory Committee founder and current co-chair of the Fryerton Police Force Pride Committee, Chief Fitch has served as aide de camp for three lieutenant governors of New Brunswick. She has been a community volunteer throughout her career and supports a variety of non-for-profit organizations. As a gay woman and the first female chief of Police Atlantic Canada, only 13th in our country's history in 2013, Leanne has many insights into policing, diversity, inclusion, and public safety. With her resilience, compassion, professionalism, and experience, Leanne is enjoying her new life chapter that includes her work with the RCMP, writing her memoir, public speaking, and pro bono work with various organizations. She and her wife, Sarah, live on Hobby Farm in rural New Brunswick. Hello class of 2020. I'm so proud of you and all those around you that have worked so hard to see this day come true. It's my honor to share this incredibly special, virtual and historic graduation with you and to welcome you to the first day of the rest of your life. This is your class and though you have not been in school these past few months due to COVID-19, you have earned your way onto the stage with some added and valuable lessons about the frailty of life the importance of taking care of others and following rules, the intersection of health and the economy, and the beauty of freedom. You've had the space to reflect and dream, to worry, to fret and stress. This time has allowed you to pull back and steady your bow before you launch like an arrow into your future. A future where you have choices to make, goals to pursue, and the opportunity to exercise the many gifts and talents you were born with many of which you have yet to discover. It is a tough and yet a beautiful and exciting time for you to walk bravely off this stage. So be courageous and know that you've got this. You were all given the gifts of brains and hearts that are uniquely yours. The gifts you were born with are held within your power to exercise with independence of thought and the freedoms provided to you by being uniquely Canadian. The knowledge you have learned is forever yours. My grandfather, a school principal, always said, it's what you learn after you know it all that counts the most. So I ask, what more will you choose to learn and do with your time in a world that is four and a half billion years old? To quote your international peer, Greta Thunberg, humanity is now standing at a crossroads. We must now decide which path we want to take. How do we want the future living conditions for all living species to be? I think many of us would agree that this statement applies to more than climate change. We are living together in exceptional times with the global pandemic, the Me Too movement and Black Lives Matter, the boiling over of police and race relations worldwide with rioting and conflicts around racism and abuse of power. 
We know that our country is not perfect as we grapple with discrimination and violence, as we reflect on the treatment of our First Nations people and our newcomers, the treatment of LGBTQ+, those with addictions and inflictions, those who are different. These important and deep-rooted issues are not discussed to the exclusion of climate change, nor an acknowledgement that technology is outpacing the capacity of the human brain, but thankfully, not our human consciousness. I have written and delivered hundreds of speeches over my lifetime, and your graduation address is the second most difficult speech I've ever been asked to prepare. I hope your inquiring minds make you wonder why. It's both simple and complex. You are the graduating class of 2020 in the 220th year history of Fredericton High School in my hometown at the school I graduated from 39 years ago. You are a unique group of Fredericktonians, our citizens, headed out into the world as the next generation of workers, doers, thinkers, parents, guardians, change makers and leaders. We are going through a time when social evolution and demands for justice, not just ice, are prevailing. And I'm a retired chief of police. I'm also a sociologist, a farmer, a gay woman, and a human being who has faced barriers, sadness and adversity. I'm also resilient and optimistic, and I will not let go of hope and joy and love. I have faith that the sun comes up every day, even when it's tucked behind clouds. Given recent world events, this may or may not be the time when you want to hear from a police officer. And yet, I believe in my heart that it is absolutely the right and necessary time to hear from a human being who spent her entire career advocating for policing reform, equality, diversity, community policing and crime prevention. From a police leader who believes that good values and character, when combined with continuous learning and sound coaching, will ensure that officers are ethical and fair, unbiased, compassionate, respectful, and trusted guardians for all people at all times without exception. But today is about you, not me. And since you are viewing this online as a graduate, you can choose to stay and listen or drift away at any time by clicking on a new page. Listening is now your choice. Where and how you place your attention and energy going forward starts today, right here, right now. A Canadian rock band, Rush, wrote a song titled Free Will and sang, if you choose not to decide, you have still made a choice. So I want you to think about this. Not taking a stand or taking a knee, taking a bow or giving a smile or a helping hand says a lot about you, your values, your courage. In the era of Hey Google Off, Snapchat, Instagram, TikTok, and whatever else pops up, please remember the incredible value of saying please and thank you, excuse me, I'm sorry, and I love you. There is no place in this world for hatred, discrimination, abuse, and corruption of power and authority at any time, for any reason, in any place. To quote Margaret Mead, a cultural anthropologist, you need to challenge the status quo and never doubt that a small group of thoughtful, committed citizens can change the world. Indeed, it is the only thing that ever has. Class of 2020, congratulations. We are all so proud of you and believe in you and your ability to mold the future through the choices you make. You've totally got this. Best wishes, stay safe, thank you. Shukran, Waliwan, Shalom, Merci, and of course, Adabu Babu Babu. The Sir Charles G.D. Roberts Medal of Literary Excellence recognizes the best grade 12 literary essayist in Anglophone West School District. The essay, judged by a jury of professional writers and post-secondary educators, is evaluated on the basis of its content and style. This prestigious award includes a pewter medal, a $1,000 cash prize, and a bursary to either UMB or St. Thomas. This year's Sir Charles G.D. Roberts Medal recipient is graduating student from Fredericton High School, Christina Arachenko. Christina is the daughter of Paulina and Andre Yurchenko. 
Christina's family emigrated from Russia only two years ago, so this is really an incredible accomplishment to not only learn a second language, but to develop her skills to the point where she is the top essayist in the district. That's really an incredible accomplishment. Christina will be attending St. Thomas University in the fall. Thank you. You're welcome. The Burks Medal is provided by Henry Burks and Sons Limited for awarding the student to the graduating class who has shown the most leadership in student affairs during his or her school career. The 2020 recipient of the Burks Medal is Vanshika Ketan. Vanshika is the daughter of Indu and Krishna Ketan. At 5'2", Vanshika has literally been looked down upon her whole life she still has managed to become a strong black cat. After two years on Student Representative Council, Vanshika was elected as Student Council President, where she initiated events such as the Winter Formal, the Spirit Assembly, and several Spirit Weeks. In her school community, she co-founded TEDx Fredericton High and played an integral role in launching the FHS Science Club. Vanshika's passion for entrepreneurship and leadership led her to be involved with the Junior Achievement New Brunswick for the past four years. As two-time CEO, she has won various awards, such as the Premier's Leadership Award, the National Evelyn Ruskin JA Scholarship, and Achiever of the Year. Vanshika is trilingual and has won the Provincial French Oratorial Speech Competition four years in a row. Outside of school, Vanshika loves to spark passion through paint. She has been selling paintings for the last five years and has raised over $3,000 of her children's taking lessons. In her free time, Vanshika volunteers as a painting instructor in the Alzheimer's and Dementia Unit at the deck and works as a camp counselor at Kingswood. After falling in love with McMaster University during her SHAD experience last year, Vanshika has decided to attend McMaster to pursue an Honors Bachelor's of Health Science. Burke's Medal Award, Vanshika K-10. Thanks. The Fredericton High School Student of the Year is awarded to a member of the graduating class who has contributed significantly to the Fredericton High School community during his or her career. The 2020 recipient for the FHS Student of the Year is Frank Anquan Yu. Throughout Frank's four years at Fredericton High School, he has maintained a high academic standing while also having a positive impact on the school community. Frank has been vital to the Positive Action Committee, serving as a committee member for two years and then as co-president for two years. Over the last four years, Frank was also an enthusiastic member of the FHS Concert Band, String Orchestra, Glee Club, and Production. Teachers have nothing but wonderful things to say about Frank. Indeed, Frank has been a student that all teachers have appreciated working with. Many teachers have noted that he was a pleasure to have in their classes for he was always someone who served as a positive role model for his peers. Outside of Fredericton High, Frank has spent time volunteering with many local organizations, such as the Fredericton Public Library, Theatre New Brunswick, the Harvest Jazz and Blues Festival, the Asian Heritage Gala, Chameleon Joe Productions, the Capital Wise Men, and the Mayor's Youth Action Team. Frank's future is bright. In the fall, he will be attending the University of Toronto, pursuing a Bachelor of Music in Performance. Frank Yu embodies everything that we look for in a black cat. And with that, we are proud to honor him as Fredericton High School's Student of the Year for 2020. Congratulations, Frank. Thank you. Lord Dufferin, Canada's third Governor General after Confederation, created the Academic Medals in 1873 to encourage academic excellence across the nation. Over the years, they have become the most prestigious award that students in Canadian schools can receive. For more than 125 years, the Governor General's Academic Award Medals have recognized the outstanding scholastic achievements of students in Canada. They are awarded to the student graduating with the highest grade 11 and 12 average from a high school. On behalf of Her Excellency the Right Honourable Julie Payette, Canada's 29th Governor-General, I am pleased to recognize the, the 2020 recipient, Maggie Kerr. Maggie had an average of 98.69. Maggie is the daughter of Dr. Paul Kerr and Don McNiven. She will be attending Mount Allison University in the fall to study science and music. Congratulations, Maggie. Thank you.
2016, 480 students walked through the halls of Fredericton High School. Before they could recognize the staples of FHS, like the pit, yellow benches, or the ramp, they were strangers to the environment and to each other. But there was one thing that they all had in common. They were all part of FHS's graduating class of 2020. Over the next four years, these people shared experiences and adversities that form the basis of their identity. Graduates, teachers, staff, friends, and families. That identity is going to be explored today. I believe that elementary school is when you stumble upon the world. Middle school is when you begin to discover others. And high school is when you begin to recognize yourself. But dang, that process of recognition is really complicated. To start, I know that I coped with the stress of being a high school teenager by complaining. A lot. I would grouch about needing to run across the school every day from my locker in the E-Wing to catch my bus in the C-Wing. I whined about people dancing to TikToks in class when the teacher stepped out for a bit. And I grumbled about not being able to spend enough time with my family because my life was engrossed in school. But on March 13th, 2020, I didn't have to complain about any of those things anymore. And I realized how much I missed it. At some point in our lives, we've all lost something. But the thing that I've lost has rarely coincided with the thing that you've lost too. This year, we've all had to selflessly forfeit our last few months of high school to protect our community from COVID-19. But even though we were being driven physically apart, we began to share a new experience that brought us closer than ever before. And that brings me back to our identity. At some point during the lockdown, as people learn new skills, took care of family, and watched a lot of Netflix, I started reading again. And as I read, I came across a word that caught my attention. Intrepid. It means brave, fearless, or resolute. It's a characteristic that you'd normally find in an adventurer or protagonist. But somehow, that characteristic has become embedded in all of us. We are the graduates of the year that never was. We define perseverance. The moment we step out of this school, we enter the world. This is our chance to take the reins and carve out a future the way we want it to be portrayed. To the graduates of 2020, congratulations. You have earned everything that you have accomplished to this day. To the teachers, staff, friends, and families. 
Thank you for supporting us when we cried. When we laughed. When we were stuck at school all day. Or locked at home for months. They say that we are the leaders of tomorrow. But I firmly believe that tomorrow is here. Our legacy starts now.